Tonight, I am super excited. First of all, thank you all for coming and being here. You look fantastic. At least for the first six rows, I can see the rest of y'all look amazing in the back. Um, I'm excited tonight because I have the honor and the privilege and also the freedom because she unlocked the basement door for me to come out here and to talk with and have a conversation with one of my favorite people in the entire world. Um, I've been a fan of our special guest tonight for years before we were moving to LA. And then by happenstance, we happened to meet in New York. And then I moved out to LA, I became her assistant. Then I went on Drag Race and she said I got too famous to be her assistant. So, I don't know. But um, I'm excited tonight because she has a new book out and we are gonna have the best time ever. And one of us will walk out of here not a, I knew it was coming! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome Jennifer Lewis! Is up. The fuck? Didn't you hear him say Jennifer Lewis? The motherfucker, sit down. <laughs> I'm sitting on y'all's asses. I'm Dr. Jennifer motherfucking Lewis. This motherfucker down in the dungeon. He calls it a basement. It's a dungeon. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Thank you for coming out. So we're excited because I'm going to ask Jen a couple questions that I prepared for tonight. But then also, we're going to give you guys an opportunity to ask some questions as well. And then afterwards, we'll have a fun signing. And then I know Jen has a 6 a.m. call time for Blackish tomorrow morning. So. We want to make sure she has a chance to get back home, but first. Well, first thing, yes. baby cake on lights. Can you bring the audience up a little bit? Please. Yeah. Let's see what happens. Oh, fuck that. Turn it back down. <laughs> <laughs> These fucking people. Look at it. No, I can't stop. Just a little more, darling. I, like, I always like to see my audience. Hi, I see you back there. Yes. Very good. Thank you. That's nice. So, Jen. You have a new book called The Mother of Black Hollywood. What makes you the mother of black Hollywood? <laughs> That's an easy one. I am the mother of black Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> it's simple. I've been everybody's mom. I played Tupac. Oh my God, here we go, y'all. You know, Taraji P. Henson. Uh, Yes, Tina Turner. Y'all tell me. <laughs> Gabrielle uh, Union's mother. Gabrielle Union's mother-in-law. You know, it goes Kadeem Hardison and Panther. Uh, I've done 68 movies, and I think that uh, uh, I, I think probably out of those 68, I might have played 40 mothers. <laughs> Excellent. So, Jen, question. In the beginning of your book, you have a quote here from Nelson Mandela that says, your playing small does not serve the world. Who are you not to be great? And you have blessed us by being a great entertainer. But if you were not an entertainer, let's take that out, if you were not that, what would your other profession, what would Jennifer Lewis be doing if she were not Jennifer Lewis? <laughs> Such a humble name. <laughs> Tra Tracy, Tracy Ellis Ross came in, was having a, just a little bad day one time, and she was saying something. I said, oh, come on, baby, you can't be depressed. Listen, you working with Jennifer Lewis, bitch. Say Jennifer Lewis, Jennifer Lewis, Jennifer Lewis. <laughs> <laughs> and she, she tells that story, <laughs> and she tells her audience, she says, I actually felt bad. <laughs> <laughs> But the question about Nelson Mandela. Um, what profession I went to, would well, you be? Oh, the profession. A, a gymnast. For 10 minutes, I thought I could be a gymnast, because I'm very limber. You've seen the high kick. Uh, I'm very limber. I've always been um, athletic. Uh, dear God, I softball, racquetball, yoga, Pilates, the course dance class. Um, and I cycle. I, 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 and I still cycle. Uh, Blackish doesn't let me work out as much as I'd like to, but whenever I can get to Pilates, I get there and I go down and get on the elliptical, as you'll read in the first chapter when I got back from a trip and 
uh, my manager, Julia Walker, was like, uh, they, a blackish wants you in two weeks. I said, bitch, <laughs> come on now. You know, I had just come off a, a cruise and all that. The, the chef was a fresh Prince fan. So that son of a bitch would make me creme brulee for breakfast <laughs> if that's what I wanted. Jen, in this book, which I don't know if you guys already have the book and you're just getting it, phenomenal book. It's a page turner, just like so good. You talk a lot in this book about be your sexual addiction in your 20s and 30s and being very sexual. You played a lot of mothers, but the question is, if or have you ever, in any audition, had to be very sexual in the audition or in a role? We've seen you a lot as the mother, but we know that Jennifer Negro, Lewis is I sexual. walk in with sex all over me. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, I am sex, fool. <laughs> Look at that, 36, 24, 30. Ow, what a winning hand. I'll take that prick. You know, uh, the most sexual thing. <laughs> the most sexual thing that I ever did uh, in my career was uh, in Girl 6, there was a scene that was cut. Yes, there was a scene that was cut. I had to talk to one of the girls wasn't there, so Lil, the boss, was the character I played. She had to take the phone call, and it was a veteran that had lost his legs and arms in Vietnam. It was a very strange scene but I had to make him come over the phone. <laughs> <laughs> We're all adults. Uh, and uh, I, you know, and Spike Lee just let me improvise. So in the process of making him come, I came. Uh, <laughs> oh, come all ye faithful. She'll be coming around the mountain when she comes. <laughs> She'll be coming around. <laughs> no, uh, I, I did. It was very sexy in front of the crew and everything. I mean, you know, look, I got into it. And, uh, but I think it was just too much for TV, so it was cut. <laughs> Switching gears just a little bit. You are a very, you know, fabulous and also sexual person, but you also are very spiritual. Yes. What, I know you, because I, and in your book it talks about a lot about you going to the ocean and waterfalls. What is your attraction to water? Well, you know, I, you know, I, I used to do a lot of spiritual searching. I would, and, and that, and, um, a lot of that was going outside of myself to search for answers. You know, everything from palm readers to face readers to, you know, Chandlers and crystals and gurus and shit, the butcher, the baker, the drummer. <laughs> <laughs> Anything to get a fucking answer <laughs> as to what I was supposed to do with this massive personality that I have had since I was a child. And um, it was quite the search. But what I came to was, uh, oh, one of the gurus I, I, I did uh, study under said once that um, the highest frequency on the planet is where the water meets the land. So I tried that out many, many times, and I have manifested on rocky shores. Um, I remember. It was one of my, and I want you guys to forgive me, usually I'm a little more up, I'll probably sprite up a little bit, but Diva Simply Singing was last night at the, uh, yes. and honey, we had, I'm, I called Shirley Ralph uh, before I left, because I had to call her, it was the best one ever. I think this is the 27th year, yeah. mm -hmm. and, uh, and I had to call it, it just was so much energy. Thelma Houston sang, Frida Payne was there, Victoria Raul, uh, uh, what's his name, the guy, Kenny Lattimore. Mm -hmm. Ooh, it was just a beautiful uh, time last night. And I carried on like a banshee. <laughs> and I think I signed 10,000 books. So I, I'm a little low energy tonight, believe it or not. Um, but what the fuck was the cat question? <laughs> yeah. That was good, that was a nice segue. 
<laughs> you got, we got. How much these motherfuckers free. play? Because I ain't got no. If they paid a lot of money, I'll give yeah, them some energy. Huge minutes. amounts. Huge. We'll be coming around the mountain. Come. <laughs> Jen, why yeah, babe. a question real quick. Nobody knows. Nobody knows how to really sell something the way Jennifer Lewis knows how to sell or promote something. With this book coming out, you had a little song that went viral on the internet. These fools told me to rap for my book. Hey. So I tap, tap, tap for my book. Hey. Red lips for my book. Hey. Titties and hips for my book. <laughs> I hit a high note for my book. Woo. Oh, now you woke for my book. Hey. Rub a pom pom for my book. Hey. You bitches better run for my book. Uh huh. Tell them. <laughs> Hot mess. You, Jen, honestly, you've become a, a huge uh, personality in addition to television, film, and Broadway, but also on the internet. Mm -hmm. How do you feel? How do you feel about being in so many people's lives around the world? I mean, I don't want to call it out early, but in these streets. <laughs> Is what I'm I don't want nobody. <laughs> Once again, <laughs> I don't want nobody fucking with me in these streets. <laughs> so, yeah, it, uh, you know, let me tell you how it happened. <laughs> Roz Ryan, who's a veteran, uh, says being, yes, dear, dear friend of mine, got me tickets to see Chicago. She was playing Mama and Brandy was playing Roxy. Now the three of us are fans of each other, of course. So I went backstage after the show, you know, big movie star and shit. <laughs> Huge. And you know, you could hear Jennifer Lewis and say, Jennifer Lewis. You know, y'all, come on now. I am so humble. <laughs> so, so listen, so I went backstage and now, you know, I was saying, oh, it was fabulous, fabulous, fabulous. And I said to Roz and Brandy, I said, why don't you guys come to dinner? I didn't mean it. <laughs> Just came up to the door. I say, ain't nothing but a boiled egg in this bitch. <laughs> <laughs> the truth is, is Roz cooked an amazing. She's from Detroit, so you know they cooked their ass off. Roz, hey. yay! Roz cooked uh, 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 salmon, corn, and zucchini that night. It was. I'm telling you, Roz cooks her ass off. She actually cooked uh, the Thanksgiving after my mother passed away, and she, it, it, the food was so good, but then she took out a turkey bone, and my mother used to always give me that turkey bone. Mm -hmm. Baby, I hit the floor and carried on, and Roz, right after, because you know, baby, we're in show business. You got to keep a sense of humor. I don't give a fuck what happened. But here's what, she looked at uh, uh, my daughter and DJ and all of them, she went, don't give that bitch no more turkey bone. <laughs> <laughs> Don't give that bitch no turkey bone. Bring some, bring some fish, chicken, and the goddamn thing. No more turkey for this bitch. <laughs> but Roz is a very dear friend, so let me tell you how it happened. Uh, they came for dinner, we had a good time, and Roz Ryan, there's a diamond in every functional hole in her body. It's just jewels and, you know, her phone is glitter and shit. She got shit in, you know, the earglasses, and, yes. you know, it's, and she's got the stylus, everything is there. <laughs> so Brandy, we'd finished dinner, and Brandy started kind of floating around my house looking at my artwork, and she was saying, you know, she would say, oh my God, this is an African street. Oh, this is a, a Peruvian street over here. You know, all my travels and that. <laughs> And then she, and I was sitting at the piano doodling, right? So uh, she went in the refrigerator to get something, and I heard her say something about a street. 
And I just got fucking sick of it. I said, sweetheart, <laughs> you know, a fucking millennial. I said, listen, baby. <laughs> I said, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> What kind of street is in the fucking refrigerator? <laughs> and her pretty, talented, happy ass tur turned and said, oh, auntie, it's just something I say. I said, well, y'all bring y'all ass over here and let's make up a song about it. <laughs> and you know, the con artist had been in my life. Uh, you'll read about it in the book. Mm -hmm. I didn't put details about the con artist in the book because we're still in the court world of it. So I couldn't put the details, but if you go online, the details are there. His name is Tony Marriott. <laughs> <laughs> Called out. So beware that motherfucker on the streets. So y'all created the song in these streets. So we, we sat at the piano and uh, we came up with in these streets. So I went, I don't want nobody fucking with me in the streets. But that was not only about the con artist, but it was mostly about how the children had laid down in front of the police barricade. And I was so proud of them. You know the millennials. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then the motherfuckers woke up and went at 30 and went, where's my childhood? <laughs> you know, and you still gonna take care of me, right? No bitch, get the fuck out. So, <laughs> so um, I, and I actually did write the book for them also because they laid down. Um, I want you and them to know there is no fire you cannot walk. You must feel the fear and do it anyway. Mm -hmm. Life, life is coming. Phone's gonna ring. Somebody's gonna have done something. Accident, somebody you love is gone. Something's coming. Tsunami, hurricane, that's, yeah, I was in an earthquake at the North Ridge had to kick down seven doors to pull people out. Yeah, you talk about that in the book. What, was, what, what training did you have in order well, to do Well, I studied karate in my 20s. <laughs> he knows, he's read the book. I, he came upstairs, I said, did you finish the book? He went, well, I'm, I said, Negro. <laughs> finish the book. <laughs> so he knows every nook and cranny of it. But, um, yeah, the night of the North Ridge, I literally had a molecular cell memory. Because I had studied that, that um, it's, a, um, it's a snap kick that you learn. And that night, it came back. And literally, when you have that ad adrenaline running and there's somebody behind a door screaming, help. Now I knew the ceiling was falling. And I'm not patting myself on the back, but I am an alpha wolf. No man is left behind on my watch, and I don't give a fuck what it is. But I will tell you this. That morning when the, it was 4.35 a.m., uh, you never forget that when you're in an earthquake. You never forget what time that was. But when it hit, it was so violent. You know, we get those little rolly ones, and we go, hey, it's earthquake, no bitch. <laughs> This was Godzilla coming in with a very large penis. I was like, God damn. I said, hey. But I had, a, it was a rare thought for me because my first thought was, whatever this is, it's bigger than me. And it was. Uh, I will give you a little thing that happened. I had meditated before I went to sleep. And I'm a firm believer in you wake up how you go to sleep. Um, so when I was, sh oh, it was so violent. Dear God, it was, it, it was just, it, I've explained it like God was like, didn't I tell you motherfuckers to stop? <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. 
Look, I just, I slept with 60 men, not a thousand. <laughs> Leave me the fuck alone. <laughs> but, um, so when I woke up, when I woke up and had that thought, I thought we had been bombed. And I thought to myself, I said, Jenny, you got about three seconds. Because if there was an afterlife, I wanted to wake up with a powerful thought. So the most powerful words to me are the words, I am. There is, it's the only thing there is no opposite to. It is the only thing, think about it. There is no I am not. Because you the I am saying I ain't not. <laughs> but anyway, that's my shit. Uh, Jennifer. Yes, quick question for you. So, <laughs> See, I, I told him I'm to keep me on point, because I'll start one story finish. But let me finish about the quake. OK, go for it. Listen. <laughs> <laughs> now, and I'm, this last thing I'm going to give you, because you can read it in the book. But I want to give you something that I don't think I put in the book. I woke up with the study of yoga. You learn to surrender. Somebody comes up behind you all with that tight shit, honey, go limp. They can't do nothing with a dead body. So go limp. Somebody come at you, you know you can't beat that, go limp. Now here's what I knew. That uh, earthquake was, I knew not to tense up. The fuck is that? <laughs> Turn that shit off. Okay, here we go. Now, <laughs> didn't you know you were coming to see Jennifer Lewis? <laughs> Sit your ass, no, okay. <laughs> now listen, listen, listen. So. When it hit, I knew, it, once again, because it was bigger than me, I knew to surrender to it. So I let it throw me. I let it toss me and fling me, and I went limp. Because here's the example. If you have a very um, starched shirt, and you take a very sharp, sharp knife and go like this, the knife goes straight through. You put that same shirt in a tub of water, you can't stab it. Remember that. Surrender to shit that's bigger than you. Because even me, even my alpha wolf ass, I was like, hey, bitch. <laughs> I surrender. But anyway, in go the ahead. book, in the book, Jen, you talk about just about being an alpha wolf and having a tunnel vision for your dreams. Mm. But along the way, you were helped out. You mentioned some teachers you were helped out by, people who stood in your corner. Was there anyone either that you named or did not name in the book that really helped Jennifer Lewis stay focused before she left and became a huge star? Guys, there were many people who took me under their wings. You know, though I was bipolar and all over the place, I mean, even as a child, it was, here comes crazy Jenny. I wore it like a medal. Shit, I had a word in front of my name. Nobody else did. Crazy <laughs> Jenny. So, <laughs> but that shit changed, didn't it? To fabulous Jenny. Anyway, uh, <laughs> red lips for my book. Okay. <laughs> Titties and hips. For my <laughs> but guys, there were so many. They saw the real me. They saw my soul. They saw that it was special. They knew I had some shit. And my teachers were not having it. The principal of my junior high school called me into her office, and she was like, because everybody was getting pregnant. You know, we were, it was a very poverty-stricken world, and, and nobody, there was no sex education, that sort of thing. And Miss McDonald, she called me in office. She said, Jennifer, don't get pregnant. <laughs> Little did she know I was sitting there pregnant. But listen, oh. I said. <laughs> Not yet, not in junior high. That was later. Um, but I don't know that there was an instructor that didn't see it and nurture me. You know, when they left the, the when they left the room, they you remember they used to put you in charge of the room if they had to go to the bathroom or something? They always put me in charge. And whenever I wasn't, if I was depressed, I didn't even know what depression was, but I was sad. We're talking junior high, high school. They would come over, because they would know something was wrong. I didn't. 
It just was my world of extreme mania and extreme depression. So they took me under their wings. Good. The entertainment world, and a lot of us experience uh, disappointment. As an entertainer, when you're putting yourself out there a lot, you experience disappointment. You talk about it in your book. There were roles that you were, you felt perfect for, did a great audition, Color Purple, Saturday Night Live, and there were disappointments with mm -hmm. those. How does one like yourself, who's worked so much in the industry and who has such confidence and walks with some, such confidence, how do you weather the disappointments, the lows? Let me tell you guys what I did. I had a fucking dream. Nothing was gonna stop me. I deemed it so. To, I deemed myself to be unstoppable. I did. I had a passion, and I passionately say to you now, if you don't have one, find it. Oh, Jennifer, how do I find it? What makes you smile? What makes you laugh? There it is. There it is. You know, I walk in my joy now. It's just on me. I wear it now. Because I have become unafraid. That's a powerful fucking sentence to say. How did that happen, Jennifer? Well, I went and took care of myself when I found out that what was going on me, on with me, was an illness. In fact, a disease, bipolar disorder. I said to my shrink, by what, bitch? <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, I knew I was bisexual and bicoastal. No, I mean, <laughs> and I knew by the way, but by who? Jen, you talk about staying happy. I know you are. No, super let me finish happy. that. Oh, Shut go, the fuck ahead, up. go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> Stop that. <laughs> if y'all knew uh, the two of us around the house, we don't even have conversation. We just speak in movies. I mean, it's every morning. What you gonna do with all that money, anime? <laughs> These pearls are tied around my neck. <laughs> I'm the only son of this. Huh? You guys wear me out when you come up and do all, I mean, all, you know everything. You know every line. Who, who, who does an impression of me? Uh, okay, all right, stand your bipolar ass up and do it. <laughs> Come on, one more. Come on. Wave at this white girl. Stand up, girl. Yeah. Oh, scarf. Don't you get any ideas, big girl? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, one more. Come on. I know damn well a gay boy gonna stand up and do me. Uh, <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, Anthony Hemingway. Yes. <laughs> Y'all know I, I, I travel a lot and I, oh, here's another one. I don't understand what you mean by rubber. What does rubber mean to me? <laughs> now, there is some trivia behind that one line. Okay, let me tell you. Now, let me tell you. If you listen carefully, I had to go in and loop that, not that line. I had to loop, hold on. I want to know why, oh, I want to know you ain't got to sing like a man. <laughs> and I said, yeah, I want to drink, but I want to watch this rehearsal. <laughs> I could not, everybody, is there anybody here that doesn't know what looping is? Yeah, you have to go in and drop your, your performance into your mouth moving, in, you know. But, and that was so fast. And like, yeah, hey, I want to drink, but I want to watch this rehearsal. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know why you got to sing like a mic. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and it was, I, the performance was so good. I think that was the only time I ever got mad that I had to repeat a performance. But I locked that bitch in, didn't I? Yes, you did. 
don't know why okay. I gotta sing it like question, a mic. Question, question. Who is this? Since, oh, we're, since we're up, we're talking about classic lines. I don't think any performance has more classic lines than the cult classic, Jackie's Back. Am I right? Okay, so. Thank since you. we're Thank here, you. since we are here in an intimate room of friends, are there any secrets or things that didn't make it into the actual film Jackie's Back oh my that God. you want to share with us? Okay, guys, you know the number Love Goddess? Yeah. Yes! Baby, 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 can't you see? Got to have it. Ain't nobody oh, no, asked okay. you to do well, uh, it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, mean, <laughs> I volunteered. Now you know I'm gonna call your ass out in about five minutes. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> so I can get through this shit. <laughs> Carry my ass home. I'm in every scene tomorrow. I was like, God, y'all didn't y'all know I had a book sign and they didn't care. Shaw Blackish is a machine, let me tell you, and it doesn't stop, y'all. It is, I wanna tell you, it is an amazing job. It, it has become the cherry on top of my career. And to work with Kenya Barris, Tracy Ellis Roy, uh, Anthony Anderson, and Lawrence Fishburne, for Christ's sake. You know, yeah, listen. Ike Turner. I have to tell Ike Turner. Hello, Ike. <laughs> <laughs> so people say, how's it working with Lawrence Fishburne? I said, honey, three things. Ice cream, cotton candy, and Christmas morning. But, no, he's, he's amazing, and the children are wonderful on the show. Oh, yes, please give it to yes. everybody. The show so, is amazing. So and love, wait, let me just say, goddess. Love, goddess. Oh, love, goddess. So, the, the day before we did the thing, the scene with David Allen, uh, not David Allen Greer, David Hyde Pierce. Um, I slept with both, but listen. <laughs> <laughs> now, you know that's a lie, but anyway, listen. <laughs> my baby. No, I have known David and his partner, Brian, for years. Good, good friends. Um, and, but I did sleep with David Allen Greer. <laughs> he would deny it. But listen. <laughs> Sorry, David. But listen. Uh, so, yeah, the day before the, the, the uh, David Hyde Pierce scene at the piano, where he's a deaf pianist, we had done a full out love goddess number. Full out, y'all. All right. I'm yes, right. oh, the pumps are off, ladies Shut and up. gentlemen. So wait, listen. So this is how it was. It was, it went a little bit like this. Now y'all know my, my kicks are high. You can't get them tonight, sorry. <laughs> now listen, it went like this. Love goddess, wham, fall down on your knees. Now when I do that, that means this bitch is kicking my head. I mean, I'm talking roundhouse kicks. Love goddess, wham! Touch me where you please. And they were carrying me and throwing me. Honey, the next day, when I had to do that one high kick, <laughs> when I had to do that one high kick at that piano, that is a very authentic moment. When I say, let me do one of these high, oh, kick! <laughs> <laughs> Oh shit, to show them bastards I can still do it. <laughs> that was a very, uh, here's another good story. I had seen all the dailies. I'd seen every daily but Liza Minnelli's. Barry Cross, who was my uh, manager at the time. Barry. Barry. Uh, he, uh, don't interrupt me, Negro. <laughs> you know I got the, uh, uh, the concentration of a fucking fruit fly. <laughs> now let's just, let me tell a goddamn story. I'll beat your ass when we get home. <laughs> hey, this motherfucker been living with me for nine years. <laughs> and if he leaves, I'll kill him. <laughs> He's my <laughs> So why'd you put on the glasses, DJ? Because you wouldn't hit a man with glasses, Jennifer. <laughs> Yay! All right, so listen. So where the fuck am I? Fucking with uh, So, uh, oh, you hadn't seen Liza's Not days. Oh, God. So Barry had, Barry had, Listen, I was listen, I was so mad that Barry wouldn't let me see the movie. Just have a private screening for me. I was so nervous. It was the first movie that I'd actually starred in. I wanted to see it. So 
he wanted to wait to give me a party. Oh my God, I walked in that apartment, honey, with my little blue Donna Karen coat on, and I was hot. <laughs> my rotten ass. I was thinking it's my movie. <laughs> Bitch. So anyway, wait a minute, y'all. So I sat there, and the movie came on, and I'd seen everybody's dailies, and you know, they were like, would you like a glass of champagne? No, thank you. Miss <laughs> <laughs> Lewis, Miss Lewis, would you like me to take your car? No, thank you. Miss <laughs> <laughs> Lewis, I said no, thank you. <laughs> so wait a minute. So Liza came on. I'd seen Whoopi, I'd seen Rosie, I'd seen Bet, I'd seen, you know, Dolly Parton, Loretta Devine, all amazing performances. And when Liza came on, Jesus, and she said these words, this is Judy Garland's baby I'm looking at in my movie. And she goes, oh, I don't know much about the African. <laughs> <laughs> I stood up <laughs> because I knew then the movie was a hit. <laughs> I took that Donna Curran bitch off. I said, get me a drink, bitch. <laughs> Somebody come get this motherfucking coat. <laughs> I knew we had a hit. And, and, and just if anybody sees this, I want to just take this moment. I've done it a million times, but I want to thank that cast See, when I was in New York doing my one woman shows, I became the entertainer's entertainer. They would come to see me after the Broadway shows at Don't Tell Mama, Freddy's, Sweetwaters, whatever club I was playing, they would all be in there studying my ass, trust me. I was, no, 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 when I got to New York, y'all, when I was that young, I was meteoric. My voice was meteoric. I had trained in the classics at Webster. I had no fear in me. I didn't know to be afraid. I was by, you know, the mania, it's a chemical imbalance in the brain. The mania was so intense and severe inside of me. I didn't know to be afraid. I used to, remember you could ride between the, the uh, uh, subway cars? I used to ride there for that rush, you know. Anyway, what's the next one? Well, speaking of the rush, your entertainer, I know, but tell everyone here, like, Back now, we promote our shows a lot of times in, in traveling stuff on the internet, post a flyer, Instagram, Twitter. You didn't have that back then. How did you get the word out in New York to fill these shows, these cabarets oh, gotcha. you were doing nightly? Listen, honey, I was the original spammer. <laughs> I would go in the phone books and just start <laughs> and write their address, send them a flyer. And got, I'd lick all the envelopes. I'd lick all the stamps. Oh my God, so one girlfriend came in and said, Jennifer, let me show you something. She took a paper towel, damped it, and <laughs> <laughs> I'd be sitting there like this. <laughs> <laughs> but you'll read it in the book. I used to go down the tickets, the old Times Square, oh. and do my high kicks down the line. I would go to the back, because I know they'd been standing there a long time, and I knew they were going to get the shitty tickets. So I said, well, yeah, you're going to do such an old, old Broadway show. You can see me. I'm right down the street. Honey, at my uh, 9 o'clock shows, it would be full of tourists. Of course, I would threaten lies, but that was another story. <laughs> <laughs> Jen, you came so far, and you've come so far in your career. A lot of people that you have started with, we read in the book, you know, Loretta Devine, you've had lifelong friends who are still friends now. Are there any friends that you had that maybe aren't here today that you wish you could, is there anyone you wish you could share this Well, most of them are not here, darling, because I killed them. <laughs> oh. Just kidding. <laughs> All right, look, I, I did, you know, I used to have very large breasts. I've had two reductions, true story. And I know that my fatty tissue is probably in some white women's lips. <laughs> no, 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 please stay with me here. No, 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 please. Don't fucking judge me, hold on. <laughs> No, they use the fatty tissue, and uh, they're standing in their yards in Beverly Hills, 
<laughs> and they're wondering why they're singing Ethel Merman song. <laughs> Poor bastards. I told that doctor to, to, to put my fatty tissue away because, let me stop. Yes. Because Just be aware that I have the all question? the videos from the breast reduction when they put Jennifer under the anesthesia before she actually fell asleep. So I have some great videos. Wait, tell them that. about. Let's roll them. Wait no, a minute, no. <laughs> no, listen, no, 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 no. Tell them about when I was a uh, 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 drug uh, recovering at that place and, and the nurse came in. Oh, Lynn, okay. Lynn, Lynn. Quick story. So Jennifer goes to a very private and, and expensive. They all know I'm rich. Uh, recovery <laughs> place. So she's Don't there, and no the only stations, though, on the cable were like National Geographic, and Jen loves National Geographic anyway. So she's watching this channel, and all these like lions and different cats are like clawing and eating each other. And she tells the nurse, come, Lynn, come in, Lynn, come in. Now look right there, baby. That's you, Lynn. <laughs> you are a lioness. I can see it about you. Alpha female. Lesbian. And, and Lynn, Lynn, that's you. But look, Lynn, you see that jaguar in that tree? That's me, Lynn. That's me. I'm a fucking jaguar, bitch. And I'm sitting there like this. Uh, Jen, are Wait you minute. sleeping? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. And when, when Lynn left the room, I did like this. I went, DJ. Yes. Please don't let Lynn touch my pussy. <laughs> Wait a minute, y'all. I had all that Demerol and Vicodin and shit. I was like this. I wouldn't let nobody but DJ in the room got slobbering and shit. I said, I said, D. <laughs> Yes. Uh, they don't, I think she came in and was playing with my pussy. I said, I said, they get me out of here, they. About five people been playing with my pussy. Them bitches came in when I was drugged. Cause something was wrong. Jen, All right, I let's think we do some, take questions. some questions. Yeah. from the audience. Yeah. All right, thank you guys. Let's give DJ a big round of applause. Ah. I want to say this, guys. Let me say this before I take the first question. DJ, uh, I met him uh, backstage when I did. Uh, Berthold Brecht's Mother Courage and Her Children with Mel Street in Central Park. And DJ came back and he's like, I'm your biggest fan. I said, nigga, I ain't got time for the bullshit. So <laughs> I said, sit your ass down while I take all this makeup off my face. So, you know, it was enough about me. I know I seem full of myself. I certainly am not sometimes. Anyway, uh, <laughs> listen, uh, I told DJ, I said, tell me about you. And I'm taking off my makeup. And he said, I just graduated from college and I'm going to LA and I, I, I want to be in Chobins and da da da. I said, and he was so sweet. He was just the sweetest thing that ever lived. And I, um, I said, well, when you get to LA, you call me. And I gave him my number, because he was just, you know. And I didn't mean it. <laughs> I have learned to shut the fuck up. <laughs> So here come this motherfucker with all this luggage and shit. So I put him down there in the dungeon. But uh, I wanted to say something. Oh, we all know, you know, he's, he's been, he's brilliant on the RuPaul Drag Race coming on this season. He, he's coming out in a movie. Shut the fuck up. He's coming out. <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna have you thrown out. Listen, oh no, I'm not. He's adorable. I can see you're sweet, but shut the fuck up. Now listen, guys, listen. Let me talk about D. This is important to me. This is my baby. Now listen, 
He's That's coming out in the movie with Gaga. What's the name of it? Uh, a Star is Born. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. he has toured around the world. Uh, he, uh, he, he just blew up. And I'm so proud of you. But let me tell you how I fell in love with him and why he's still at my house. <laughs> <laughs> Like I said, we talk in movies. So I went down on the second level to have Butters Lewis, who you might be Sean Frise, having poop. He had to poop in the morning. So DJ's down there, of course, in the dungeon. And I see him <laughs> doing something. I don't know what he's doing. And I look down, but I was, and, and he's, look, when he moved in, I didn't know he, was, he did drag. And I had not been to a drag show. All right, seven. But. <laughs> <laughs> He was unfolding all those ones and, and tips that he gets. So, classic line, I would say, what are you gonna do with all that money, man, of me? <laughs> <laughs> but instead of answering me with an Ike line or a Tina line, he just, it was early morning, he just kind of looked up, he went, I'm saving up to get my grandma some, cough, uh, some um, carpet. I'm saving up to get my grandma some carpet. <laughs> I fell in love with him at that moment, and I haven't let him go. Oh, thank you. Okay, let's take some questions. Questions from the audience. All right, I'll bring a microphone to you. Just a quick reminder around here, questions typically start with a W or an H, sometimes a D. They are generally short. Only DJ gets to ask follow-up questions. And there is no such thing as a two-part question. <laughs> bootleg. All right, bootleg. Come on, boot. <laughs> Hi. Hey, you know I love you. Yes. I um, just wanted to ask, when the, uh, you know, the, the show that you and DJ did together, the, the Shandula and uh, uh, that. Jennifer Lewis and Shandula yeah, web yeah. series. It was really, really hilarious. I really, really loved it. And I just wanted to know if you're ever going to pick it back up or anything. Darling, we're too famous now. We don't have time. <laughs> we don't have time for that bullshit. Nah, that's her response. My response is yes, please. Anthony, can you direct it? Where's Anthony Hemingway? Done <laughs> deal. Didn't you get an Emmy last year? Congratulations. Congratulations. Oh, yes, shit. come Anthony on, Hemingway. Come on, you famous fuck. I ain't did shit for me. Let me tell y'all what Anthony uh, Hemingway did. I, 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 he was supposed to bring me flowers and, and brought me a watermelon. <laughs> <laughs> so every time he wants something, he come over with a watermelon. Uh, come on. Je um, Jennifer Lewis, I just want to say thank you so much. You're such an inspiration, especially coming out with the bipolar um, diagnosis because it's really rampant in our community. With you coming out, I just want to say thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Jen, follow up real quick. How was that? You went on Oprah and talked about bipolar disorder. I think maybe you were one of the well, first. Well, here's the thing, y'all. I just wrote a show. So you got to understand, when you're one thing all your life, I didn't know. Like I said, I was like, by what, bitch? You know, listen. I said, I said to her, I said, look, if you white people gave it a name, that's fine. But <laughs> <laughs> just crazy, Jenny. So when I wrote the show, my one-woman show, Bipolar Bath and Beyond, it was just a joke. But what, it wasn't a joke. Uh, Mark Brown, who wrote, wrote all my one-woman shows, who I went to college with, and wrote Jackie's Back. Um, I called him. My, I had just bought a new house. I was on a manic, I was having a manic episode. You have to go, to, I'm not going to go into that story, but uh, go to the Oprah interview, and you'll see the Pope had just died. I couldn't get out of Rome, and I missed four days on my medication. So when I got back, I saw this big house in my neighborhood. I went, I'll take it. But anyway, you know, but just you, 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 you go, go, you spend, you drive fast, you talk fast, you know, you're rude, you're rageful. When you're in a hurry, you're rude. You're gonna be rude to somebody. So leave a little early. And, and when in therapy, you learn those, no, listen, you learn those tools. If I find myself speeding, I pull over and I go, Jenny, what's wrong? You have to pay attention to yourself and others. You know, I was called a nigger. Don't, don't, yeah, just relax. <laughs> listen, no, listen, listen, listen. 
an old white woman called me a nigger about a month ago in a store. In, uh, let me tell the story. I know it's disgusting. But she was, of course, she was nuts. <laughs> so, but I, my daughter was with me. And I thought she was kidding around. You know, I'm all joyful and carrying on in a boutique. And it's a boutique that, well, you see. So, <laughs> so I, I looked at her. And I said, you're kidding, right? And she was saying she'd slept with Trump or something. You know, it just nuts. But it was, I was with my daughter. So she said it again. She said, it's a, it's, this is the nigger stuff, right? I mean, I, I know she was, I don't know what the fuck was wrong. But I wished I could have just walked away, at least in front of my daughter. So what I did, because I knew if I'd heard her say it a third time, uh -oh. it ain't that much medication in the fucking world. <laughs> it ain't that much therapy in the world. I started to, my voice has always been my weapon. And uh, uh, you know, uh, certainly amongst other things. So I started to scream as loud as I could so I wouldn't hear her say it again. And I grabbed Charmaine by her arm and took her out in the street so she couldn't hear it again. I was so fucking proud of myself. I wish I could have left without screaming. But see, that's walking the walk. You can't. And Charmaine, I could see, was so scared because I was just getting ready to go on the book tour. And she knew if I beat this bitch down. Because <laughs> if it's one person that knows my rage, it's Charmaine, poor thing. No, it, it, was, it wasn't that bad. That, that's what happened to mama. Go ahead. Oh my God, when she started that shit, I was like, oh shit. You, you, so you want to die. But anyway. <laughs> But listen, listen, <laughs> Charmaine, I pulled over. I let her cry in my arms. She was so scared, I said, and I promised her. <laughs> I said, I promise I'll walk away. Because she knows what I'm capable of. And I want to say this to you. When somebody rolls up, That's enough, yes, darling. Walk away, walk away and resist. Don't fight amongst ourselves. We got, a, we got some other shit to fight for. We have another question? Yes, darling. Come on, baby. Um, for some of us uh, upcoming actors and actresses, um, I would like to know, how do you prepare for the many projects that have come your way? You know, uh, let me, I can say the typical answer, you know, you do the character study, you do the Stanislavski method. I know all of that. Let me tell you what happened when I didn't prepare. I didn't get the fucking job. Because I'm a natural, Sometimes I think I can just walk in the room. You study. You get in there, you gotta go to the internet and look up what Stanislavski is. You get your ass in classes. I continued my education after college. Voice lessons, dance classes. And but what I hadn't done was I studied for the camera. And see all that big shit I would do for the theater, that this shit didn't work for the camera. You had to know who you were in order to, cre to create another character, you see. And I didn't. I was all hot air. Cute, talented, yes. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. Still cute and talented. I know yes. that. Oh, honey, I don't need no more applause tonight. Don't be <laughs> presenting my ass. 
But <laughs> that's my baby. Um, but yes, do the work. Mm -hmm. Do your homework. I don't care what it is. The worst cussing I think I've ever gotten from Jennifer Lewis, because I live in the house, sometimes I get to the advantage of being able to say, can you, I'll, you know, sad eyes, like, I don't have anyone to read for this audition with me. Would you please read with me? And she'd be like, hmm. But if I have not rehearsed, Someone who can call it out in five seconds, or when you feel like you've done it, do more. I tell them, I said, go downstairs and go downstairs and learn it. Don't come up here with the bullshit. I don't have time for that. And yes, I do coach him. And has he become me? Is he little Eve Harrington? <laughs> <laughs> but DJ has permission. <laughs> Gotta pass the torch somewhere. We have maybe one or two questions. Come we have on. time for one or two more. Yes, love. Oh, uh, oh, okay, we'll get that one next. I'm sorry, I saw Hello, you. Oh, um, no, the mic's back there. What is it, yeah. darling? Um, you once talked about um, being in the outhouse, and a lot of us connect with you because we are people who are not from here, not from L.A., not from Hollywood, and we are just from, like, where you are. You talked about being in the outhouse, and you talked about the sex, the stairway to its success, uh, the elevator to success, it's broken. Take the stairs. Yes. And so I wanted to know what is your mantra? What do you say to yourself being in a culture that you're not probably used to when you first started out? What did you say to yourself to keep yourself going? Go get them, Tiger. Mm -hmm. Go and turn that shit out. Do your best and leave the rest. Oh, honey, I would enter a room like a tsunami. But it didn't matter when I didn't know who I was. You understand? You got to go in with something in your soul, in your heart, in your soul. You have to become. If it doesn't serve the moment, then leave it outside the door. Serve the moment. Don't go in those rooms trying to make friends with the cast and director and shit and carrying on. You carry your ass in there in character and do your job. Mm -hmm. They are looking for somebody to do that job. Yes, there's a question, and then we're going to take him. Yes. Sorry, I got a question for you. I love you for a long time, but I just wanted to know, out of all the characters you played, what was your most challenging role that we haven't, that we don't know about? Most challenging role. I always tell people, what's love got to do with it? It was very easy for me because I was in love, and I had no fear in me. And the woman I was creating was from St. Louis, so I knew her so well. And I met Tina Turner's mama in a vitamin store. It's in the, it's in the book. And, and she turned out, I was kind of scared to say hello, because you know how I betrayed her in the movie. But I knew it was her. <laughs> Tina looks just like her. She was so beautiful. And uh, she, she uh, hugged me, and then she pulled back from me, and her eyes were watery. And this is what she said. She said, mm. she said, I wanted to be so dressed up when I met you. Aww. Anyway, so, uh, and how did she take you, your performance? Had she seen it? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, she pulled out a knife, but I ran. <laughs> <laughs> And our, our final question for the evening. But, but I want to get back to one little thing. <clears throat> you ask about my, my favorite, my most challenging role. I don't think anybody's ever asked that. They've always asked me my favorite, but they've never asked me my most challenging. I think it, it had to have been um, Yvette Portier um, from Mother Courage and Her Children opposite Meryl Streep. Mm -hmm. That was a challenge. But you know what? I'm on a little story there. Yes. When I got to the rehearsal, first day of rehearsal, now George E. Wolf had hired me without an audition. Now you can imagine how many actresses in New York wanted that fucking job. But uh, George E. Wolf had remembered that one day 
I used to fuck with the press department at the public theater when I was doing uh, The Divas Dismissed. I used to kick their door in, and one day I started screaming Portia from Julius Caesar. <laughs> For no fucking reason. <laughs> so fast forward 25 years later, however, 15 I think it was. It's in the book. Uh, George C. Wolfe's 26 women, his assistant told me this story. He said that 26 women were called back out of the thousands that auditioned. And when they left that day, George put his hand in, this great uh, director, George C. Wolfe, said, he told me he put his head in his hand and said, Who am I gonna get to play this Jennifer Lewis? Get Jennifer fucking Lewis on fuck. Cause he had remembered, now he knew I could hold my own on stage with Meryl Streep. He knew I could sing, you had to sing. But he remembered in that second that I had trained in the classics. So you see that story, why the fuck did I tell it? You would tell your challenging, most challenging yeah, role. the challenge, here, okay, and here's, wait a minute, wait, wait, wait. Come on, y'all, I got so much on my brain. I, look, honey, I got blackish lines in my fucking head. <laughs> that check, bootleg is one thing, but that check is enough. <laughs> Fuck that shit. So listen. So this is a great story. So first day of rehearsal, mm. first day of rehearsal, Mel, we're in the theater. Meryl Streep is down on the floor, you know, getting dirty. You want to talk about preparing. <laughs> this bitch was prepared. So she was down on the floor in her in her wardrobe, getting all dirty and turning. The script is here now. And she was turning the page so fucking fast. <laughs> and I was like, oh my God, she's got a photographic memory. Now this is Brecht. Brecht is far more difficult than Shakespeare. The first day of rehearsal, George Wolfe also said to the entire cast, he said, there's one pause in this play, and it's not yours. <laughs> and you know I'm a pause and bitch. So uh, for dramatic effect. So there she was, turning, turning, turning. I got so intimidated. I was like, oh, fuck. You know, it's fucking Meryl Streep. I'm sorry, but it's fucking Meryl Streep. So I called George. I said, George, can I talk to you in the wings? <laughs> it's a true story. I got back in the ring. I went, George, George, I, George. Because I had been on strong medicine for six years. I hadn't done theater in so long. I mean, I had showed up thinking that was craft service. <laughs> <laughs> was no fucking breakfast. <laughs> I really had forgotten about the theater. And I, but I did wake up that morning, I said, Jenny, I'll get back to George. But I, I woke up that morning, I said, Jenny, you're back in New York. Get on the train and go down to the public theater. Biggest goddamn mistake of my life. First of all, I was mobbed. <laughs> okay, I was. But, <laughs> but, I missed my stop and went all the way, had to go all the way to Brooklyn. So therefore, the great Jennifer fucking Lewis was late for Meryl Streep. Uh, Christopher Walken was doing the role. It was later recast with Kevin Klein. George C. Wolfe, Tony Kushner, the motherfuckers. And here I come, door all loud and shit. <laughs> And all of them did, just like this. They had, they were doing this table read. They went. <laughs> but, so, so I'm back in the wings with George. And I'm crying, I go, George, I don't think I can do it, George. I said, I'll get you somebody else, I promise. I said, I wanna go back to LA. I was, I really was scared to death. I really was, I don't get scared. And you wanna talk about a challenge. And George C. Wolf, you ask me, you know, who shaped me? Mm -hmm. but 
dead or alive. Well, this moment was a great moment in my life. Hmm. Because he didn't patronize me. He didn't make fun of me. This was, you know, Jennifer Lewis sobbing, snotting. He looked at me in my eyes. He said, Jennifer, jump into the river for me. Let me see your strokes. And if you can't get to the other side, I'll jump in and get you. Mm. I thought to myself, well, gosh dang. <laughs> <laughs> but you know I wasn't satisfied. I said, can I, can I sing my song first? <laughs> but you know I was confident in the singing. So, I went out there, she said, bitch is still. I call her bitch, because you know Meryl's cool, bitch. So, <laughs> so she's down there just to turn and still turning. So now I don't want to blast nobody's ear, but she's down there. And so uh, Jean Tatora, um, brilliant pianist, she started the chord. And I went, do Meryl. I'm standing there, Meryl's with the script. And I'm singing and she goes, the, the page is slow. <laughs> Watch my eye. It was so slight. It was such a slight eye. Watch it. <laughs> and I said, to, I saw just the slight fear in the greatest actress in the world. I said to myself, I got you, bitch. <laughs> the same God that made your white ass made me. Come on, bitch. <laughs> But also, let me end that with this. You've heard, I'm sure you've all asked about her at one point, and you've heard everything. You've always heard she was warm and gracious. Guys, she was the best. My God, she was better. There are a hundred stories, and I'm going to put them in the next book. I couldn't put everything in it. But she was so gracious. You know, we would ride our bikes through Central Park. They hated that we were on bikes. They'd be like, what the fuck, where are they going? <laughs> <laughs> but Meryl was just a free spirit, and we'd go over to the boathouse. We'd go here and there. And, um, and how it, do we pronounce her name? Oh, I can't go into that. You read the book. <laughs> OK, I'll give it to you. When I first met her, and I was like 21 or something, uh, there was a, a theater a charity. And, and, and I saw her. And I was drunk. I went over, I said, Ma! <laughs> now, mind you, I did not remind her of this shit when I worked with her. <laughs> I said, Ma! And you know she I mean, she was instantly disgusted with my drunk ass, and she did she said she did she was sweet, but she did like that. She went, my name is Meryl. <laughs> <laughs> if I had known, I would have said, well, I'm bipolar, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't know then. So she said, my name is Meryl. I said. I know your name is Meryl. <laughs> but Meryl rhymes with girl, so Meryl girl. <laughs> she was disgusted. <laughs> that bitch went over the other way. I said, fuck you, Meryl. <laughs> last, we have one time for just one more question. I here, think here, the, the last, last question right, is. Yes, darling.
right? You are, hi, Mike. Um, <laughs> you are substantial, right? There, you've changed lives, I think, through your art or through your person. So of all of the many ways in the world that you can have a platform to change people's lives, why acting? Well, a, a, one thing that I, I was, before I was an actress, was a singer. Singers, real singers, are actors. You have, you, you, there's no difference. When you own a song, you own a song. I learned a lot of that from Bette Midler. Um, how to just be still and sing a ballad. Instead of all this dumb shit, <laughs> you know, just stand your ass there. She would stand there and she'd go, look at my face. I know the years are showing. Look at my eyes. You know, whatever it was, she would just stand there. And honey, let me tell you something. When I work with the greats, the Whoopi Goldbergs, the Denzels, the Merrills, the Sharon Stone, the Bette Midlers, I pay the fuck attention. <laughs> you understand? Yeah. I, 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 I do want to do, just very quickly. Yeah. I just would, thank you so much. So beautiful. Yeah, no, so I never true. leave a man yes. behind, darling. Okay. <laughs> do you have anything to say about what is going on right now with the assaults, the, um, the light that's being shed? I can I can only imagine that this is this okay. is your industry. This is yes. I'd love to hear just two sentences. Let me speak to that. Gladly. You will read in the book that I was molested by the minister of my church. You will read in the book that a young man who was attending to deliver a package put a knife to my throat. You will read in the book that I had a sexual addiction. I want you to go to YouTube. I want you to look at these new uh, uh, interviews that I've done about Trump, about the sex uh, scandal. And it's not even a scandal. It's some shit we have had to, should have been dealing with from the dawn of time. Um, but let me say this. Yes, I am speaking out loudly about it. I'm so glad that the book came out at this time. I'm glad that I did it, you know, that it's there. So listen, I said this on The View. <laughs> There's one thing to be sexual. There's another one, another thing to be evil. I say in my book, guys, we are as sick as our secrets. Somebody fuck with you, I don't care in what way, and it is inappropriate. Your children, you tell your children that if some shit happens to them to tell. Tell somebody. Don't keep that shit in, inside of you and go somewhere in the dark and eat yourself to death, drink yourself to death, you know, get high yourself to death. You walk your walk. We all have a right to pursue happiness. I was depressed for the first 33 years of my life. I don't play that shit no more. Amen. Mm -hmm. You tell. You tell. 